In this segment for the Dutch Cottage Design Project, we're going to take a look at stairs and how to place our stairs in the basement going to the second platform and look at detailing the headroom for the section. Let's go into the program and take a look at the steps. To place a set of stairs that spans platform, you can choose your stair tool, in this case just a set of straight stairs. Click and place the stairs and that will actually have the right height and information to span the two platforms. You can click on these stairs and hold the Alt key down and then pull your mouse around and curve those stairs and control it. It would be the same thing as if you clicked from the menu and placed a curved stair. While your stair is highlighted, there are stairs, there are tools in your edit menu for an automatic stairwell. You can then use a tool to create a flare or curved, curved stair, create that, and then we can grab these edit handles and pull those back. And then one more thing is a starter tread, so you can actually set that and create a starter tread. So you have quite a bit of control over the way those stairs will look. Now for our design, what we want to do is we want to actually place a set of stairs back in this area that will be an L-shaped stair. Let's delete this stair, and I'm actually going to go back into the plan view and create our stairs. I usually draw these out somewhere in the middle of the room rather than clicking right against the wall because I don't know what the size is going to be. So to begin with, you click and drag on the up direction and then you come over, usually pick up my snap, and click and drag in the other direction. And when you click in between them, it will actually form the landing for those stairs. Once you have that, we can open up the stairs. Let's just double click on them, open up the dialog. On the general panel, the first thing you'll notice is the make best fit. If that button is actually able to be clicked on, that means your stairs do not reach between the two platforms. So just sele simply select that and it's going to stretch your stairs so that they then span between the bottom floor and the top floor that you are placing your stairs on. You can then come in and make some modifications. In this case, let's go ahead and remove the check mark or the mark here for automatic treads and specify some information here. First of all, I want to have my treads exactly the same depth when I do that. Next, I'm going to specify the number of treads to be longer on stair segment 1. So I'm going to type in 11. And on the next one, I'm going to type in 5. And you can see that my riser height right now is 11 and 16. If you want to uncheck that, you have control over the information for your riser height. And with the stair still selected, I'm going to simply grab that and bump it against the wall in this direction and bump it in against the wall in this direction. You go back to the 3D you can see the stairs. In fact, I don't want to have a railing against this wall. Let's go ahead and open up the stairs. We have control over that. Let's go to the Style tab. We'll leave the stringer at wall, but actually on the newels and balusters, let's remove the railing on the right, and then that should remove that off that segment. If you go up a floor, you're not going to see the stairs unless you turn on your glass house view because what we have not done yet is we have not selected the stairs and clicked Automatic Stairwell. When you do that, you can simply select the stairs, and the tool is called Automatic Stairwell, that will generate an opening in that stair platform. So now we turn our camera back on to the standard camera. You can see that it's automatically created that opening. One of the things you'll notice is we have a furred wall in the basement, which is a concrete wall followed by a sheetrock wall. And we need to figure out what we're going to do in this area in here, and then we'll take a look at how to correct the railing. So going back, let's split our screen and take a look at the process for making those changes. I'm going to zoom up and move into the second floor and let's take a look at the process to make those changes. First of all, I'll select the doorway that's automatically created in that railing and we're just going to bump that to the wall. And in the room area, when it generated the automatic stairwell, let's open this up, it creates a room type of open below which spans the platform. If you take a look at the structure diagram, it actually spans up two platforms so it's open to below. On the molding section, let's go ahead and add our molding back in by selecting default, close that dialog, and then you can see the molding regenerate. To create the flooring material between the two, I'm actually going to use a polyline solid and just draw that in this area to create our flooring because we have nothing over the top of that wall. Typically if you have two interior walls or two exterior walls that are the exact same thickness, it's not an issue, but you'll notice when we turn on I reference display layers here and go down a floor, you can see that our concrete and our furred wall is actually quite a bit thicker, which is what you're seeing in this area. So let's draw that on floor one, and we're going to use the polyline solid tool to create that. 
So I'm going to select that polyline solid tool and I'm going to come in here and just create a polyline solid in that area. Just slightly overlap that and let's set the thickness of it. The top of our subfloor is at zero and our finished floor should be 7 8 But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change this from the finished floor. We'll make that at zero and go ahead and close that. And then using the material eyedropper in our 3D view, let's go ahead and match the flooring material and we'll just apply that onto that area. Back in the plan view, let's use the number three on the keyboard. We'll click and place a break in this area. And let's pull that out a little bit and I just want to have a slight overhang there. And then we'll pull that down and position it. I'll just leave that short because what I want to do in the next segment of the video is I want to maximize the floor space. If you take a look right now, my floor space is limited on this floor and if I can move this rail back and still have my 6-8 headroom as I go down the stairs or more floor space on the main floor. So let's take a cross-section and create our headroom diagram. I'm going to use a back clip cross-section tool in the stairs and just create a small slice right in here. When that view is up, I'm going to use the W on the keyboard and just draw a line right in this area that will indicate our 6-8 headroom. Using the dimension tool, let's use our end-to-end -end dimension. Come in here off of the sheetrock, place that, and let's go ahead and s simply type in 6 foot 8. And I'm actually going to zoom in where that dimension located up top and make sure that that is going right to the sheetrock because that's important for that headroom. I'm just going to pull that down so it snaps onto the sheetrock. Zoom back out. Go ahead and make that adjustment again to the line at six foot eight. And now I'm going to draw one more line parallel to the stairs. And we'll just come in here and we'll zoom in and we'll pull that down. I'm going to hold my control key down so that it's on the top edge of the treads. You may have to hold that down to create the same slope. And then where this line intersects over here is where the six eight would be. So let's go ahead and pull our dimension over to right in this area right here. And that's where our six foot headroom six foot eight headroom would be. Now if you want to know exactly what that distance is, let's use the tape measure and come over here and create our dimension. And you can see that you know, right around uh, seven, two foot seven is going to be the distance we could pull that wall back up on that floor. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go into our floor plan, grab this wall. I'm going to go ahead and pull it back. As I'm pulling it back, I'm going to press the tab key and then I'm going to enter in two foot seven in the dialog box that comes up. Go back into our section view and you can easily see that we now have headroom. You can detail this out. There is an automatic auto detail in here that you can place your fills. There's also CAD details in the library. Let me just open that up. I've saved one of the CAD details that I happen to use in my favorites library under my CAD blocks and I have a stair code detail that I can place maybe not here in the diagram but maybe off to the side so that this can be used. You can simply use this, unblock it and make changes that you need to make for the diagram and save it into your library as your own. There's actually over 500 details that are shipped with Chief Architects so you can take advantage of that. You could overlay it on your foundation detail and use that to save some time. Before I wrap the video up I want to show you how to create a set of winders between the two platforms. It works pretty similar to the way we created our L stair except a set of winders will require another stair segment. I drew stair segment number one here. I'm going to draw stair segment number three and maybe have four sets of treads in here. Then we'll just drag another uh, set of stairs off to this direction. Now on this set of stairs let's go ahead and hold the alt key down and we're going to create a curvature for those until it's about 90 degrees and now I can come over here and uh, bump those stairs together and then we'll go ahead and slide this entire stair segment against the wall. We'll just draw a marquee around this. We'll bump it against the wall this way and bump it against the wall this way. Once it's bumped against the wall we can open up the stairs. Once you've opened it up you can come in here select winders, select OK, and then it will go ahead and fill that space. Let's go ahead and take our overhead camera here and you can see how the winders has filled the space in that area. So again it requires a different stair segment that is curved and then you open up the dialog and just simply select the winder option. In the next video segment we're going to take a look at our terrain and then uh, placing our decks.